For more than 30 years, the Namaskit Group has been serving the needs of developmentally challenged uh, adults and their families. The organization was founded by parents and concerned local citizens. It was the first in our area to address the needs of adults over 22. They've expanded their outlook somewhat, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But first, I'd like to uh, talk about, well, introduce you to two people here who are joining us. Um, Heidi Pina Barnes is the coordinator of Namaskit's uh, 5K Walk and Run, which is on May 5th. And Ross Hooley, Director of Building Futures, joins her. Uh, Ross has uh, worked, uh, Heidi has worked uh, with Namaska Group for 20 years, Ross 31 years, and uh, they both are veterans of the Namaska Group. Now, we should say Namaska, which spent more than 30 years in Fairhaven, recently relocated to Mattapoisett off Fairhaven Road in a complex called the Pines. And uh, it's a, a beautiful location if you haven't swung by to see it. The Masket has a fundraiser coming up, a 5K walk and run scheduled for May 5th. And here to talk about the event is Heidi and Ross. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you, Thank you Jim. Um, so, Heidi, uh, this event is uh, starting at uh, Fort Phoenix. And it's the second year it started there, right? Tell us in general about this event and uh, the money that's raised, which is pledges and sponsors, uh, how is that used? Um, the uh, money that is raised is used to supplement um, our programs at Namaskit. We've been doing this since 2014. This is our second year at um, Fort Phoenix. And, um, you know, we use the, the money that is raised. We have corporate sponsors that also sponsor us. And um, the money is raised to supplement the uh, different programs. You know, did you want to add to that? Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, I mean, s some examples, uh, we do a lot of work with families who have children with special needs, and so for services and uh, that aren't covered by the state, and most of our funding does come from the state, about, about which is about 90%, but 10% is fundraising, and so that's used to supplement, as Heidi said, the, that what's well, not paid by the state, but uh, we could use the funding, for example, to help uh, families build wheelchair ramps. If their house is not accessible and they've got a child with a disability who's in a wheelchair, they need to be able to get into the homes. And not everybody has a ramp, so we help with that. Assistive technology, for example, or if um, families are in crisis, um, helping pay for some of those costs. It could be um, paying for camperships or for, uh, to help people participate in recreational classes in the community. Uh, so it's, it's quite varied. Um, and also the funding is sometimes used to help people find employment as well. Um, we do have the state contracts, but often that is not enough, and so we're committed to the people that we support, and we need to make sure we have that funding available to help with that. Still time to sign up, uh, Heidi? Yes, there is still time to sign up. Uh, you can go to www.namasketgroup.org to sign up. Um, the 5K starts at 9 a.m., and registration starts at 8 a.m. at Fort right. Phoenix. And folks, uh, when you sign up, you're going to sign up and you're going to be given a pledge, a pledge sheet, is yes. that correct? Yes. And you're expected to raise some money here. Yes. After all, this is a non-profit organization. It can use the help of the community. As mm -hmm. Ross mentioned, about 10% of the money uh, that's 90% uh, uh, of your budget is really state funded mm -hmm. and the others is really uh, uh, gained through fundraisers. Yes. Um, and uh, I know that people are generous, been generous in the past. Mm -hmm. This event uh, calls for that again. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. All right. Um, now, you signed up a number of corporate sponsors. Mm -hmm. uh, those are folks who make sizable donations to this organization. Yes. Who are some of those folks? Um, we have Bank Five, Simmons, God Oil, Southern Mass Credit Union, Claremont Companies, and Hampton Inn. And they're important in, in, in this effort. Absolutely. Yeah, I Absolutely. mean, they, they really, uh, and as a matter of fact, we had someone from the Bay Sox in earlier, and I oh. think he mentioned some of these mm -hmm. folks, uh, Bank Five, uh, one of them I think that he talked about. Uh, so these folks are really important in this community, and it's a wonderful thing. Um, individual runners and walkers also make contributions with the pledge sheets we talked about, and this money is used to fund programs, as Ross has mentioned. So Ross... Um, I'm going to have you talk about one program, really to talk about uh, 
Building Futures. You are the uh, director of the Building Futures program. That's correct. What is Building Futures? So this is a project which I started back in 1999, so we've been around for the last 18 years, and we provide very individualized services to students who are attending public school systems um, from 14 through to 22, and, and these are students who have a range of disabilities from developmental disabilities to learning disabilities, students with communication challenges, students who uh, have physical um, disabilities, uh, students who have autism. Um, and we very much believe that students with disabilities should have the same opportunities as their peers do to participate fully in community life. And so the typical sorts of experiences that a teenager has should be available to the students that we support. So we do a lot of work, for example, on helping people find employment helping people explore the different types of jobs that are out there so then they can make an informed decision as to what they want to do for work in the future. Uh, we help students learn what we call life skills, which is a fancy word for the grocery shopping and banking and using the public transportation, cooking skills, but doing them in places, Jim, that makes sense, doing them in places where they'll actually use the skills. So it's not a segregated classroom, it's actually in the community. So all our services are community-based. Uh, we also support students to develop friendships based on mutual interest. Um, so we were talking before, if you're 15 and you're a young man, you could like wrestling, professional wrestling. And so our goal is how can we get people together who, from this class who also like professional wrestling so they can go to, to a wrestling event, for example. And that's how friendships are built, based on mutual interest. And then we've been doing a lot more work recently on helping students participate, uh, go to local community colleges, Bridgewater State University and BCC, where they're taking classes of, where they're auditing classes of their choice. That's wonderful. Um, you also do a lot of programs to assist families as well. Um, Heidi, you might want to talk about some of your family programs, support yes. programs. Um, I, I'm also the coordinator of the Agency with Choice program. It's a self directed model that um, families um, in, are in control of their son or daughter's day-to-day um, -day lives. So they're, you know, they take part in, you know, um, hiring staff, supervising staff, and planning the day-to-day -day schedule for their, you know, son or daughter. So it's very individualized, um, and it's a very unique program. All right. And uh, other family support programs uh, that perhaps may not be on the radar for folks, uh, Ross, and mm. anything else? Uh major family support program is Family Connections, which is a family support project. Um, and people who have participated in that are people who, uh, children who live with their family, who live with their parents at home. Uh, these are people who are referred to us by the Department of Developmental Services. Um, we actually support over 350 families in the Great New Bedford area. Uh, again, providing a flexible range of supports and services from um, advocacy services, so making sure that students get the services that need, they need in the school system through to connecting families to existing community resources, to providing um, uh, um, funding, as I mentioned before, for you know in, in various situations. So it's a, it's a variety of different services, but really helping families keep their children at home. You know, folks might not understand how important those programs really are. Families understand, you guys mm. understand, but the general public may not quite get it. But if you have a disabled youngster or disabled young adult, there are challenges every day that the average folk might not be aware of, might not even think about. And that's why Family Connections and these other family support programs are so important. You can reach out to them, have questions answered, uh, maybe just a source of information. You'd like to get information on family support or other programs that can help your child or your young adult and uh, that's you can go to these places they're information resources and uh, they can help you with your situation it's an amazing thing uh, but uh, people who work in this business in the nonprofit business and in the world of developmentally challenged people they, they know a lot of stuff, man. Yeah. They know a lot of stuff. They've been there. You two folks are veterans, mm -hmm. and you can provide the answers. That's why these family support programs, to, at least to me, are uh, so important. Um, I want to remind you, you're listening to Town Square Sunday. My guest is Heidi Pina Barnes, coordinator of the Namaska Group's 5K Walk and Run, May 5th, 
starting at Port Phoenix, also Ross Hooley, who's the director of Building Futures, which is a program out at the Namaski Group to help young people get involved with their peers, make new friendships, and perhaps get a, a path to employment or some other activities. So, um, again, thanks to both of you for coming in. Thank you. Um, what is, uh, I mean, you, Ross, you've seen Namaskit grow, perhaps change a little bit hmm. um, over the years. The mission, though, is really still the same, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, Jim. Um, and perhaps I can give it a little bit of history, if that would be helpful. I'm sorry, what was that? Perhaps I could give a little bit of history to yes, the organization. Please do. Please do. So it was founded back in 1984 by the Graves family who uh, lived in Fairhaven. Uh, their son David at that time was about to turn 22 and leave the Fairhaven school system. And the only option available to David was, in fact, to go to what we call a sheltered workshop, which is essentially a segregated facility where people with disabilities would go and work would be brought in by local employers into this facility where they would work. Um, but the, they, um, George and Joan wanted more for the, their son, and they wanted to create a, an organization that would support David to be sort of fully included in his community. Uh, working, for example, working, um, having friends, participating fully in community life. And so the organization has really evolved since then to where we are today, but very much the focus is to provide what we call personalized and flexible supports to families and individuals with disabilities to live, work, and develop relationships within our communities. So we talk a lot at Namaska about what we call valued social roles. And valued social roles are things like um, being an artist, a musician, an employee, a friend, a college student. They're all valued roles. But it takes a lot of effort and planning to make these things happen. So um, people will see people with disabilities for the gifts and talents that they have rather than uh, their disability. So um, the organization has evolved over the time, but um, the mission has always pretty much remained the same, to have, help people become fully engaged in their communities. And uh, once again, we want to check with uh, Heidi here to tell us about the 5K walk. Is this going on rain or shine, this event? Yes, it okay. is. It is going on rain or shine. Let's hope for sun. Let's yes. hope for warm temperatures. Yes. yes. I mean, it, it is May after all, yeah. folks. So let's, <laughs> let's hope the sun comes yes. out and it's... Uh, you know, 65 to 70 would be nice. Uh, but where can people go to find out more information, to sign up, and to uh, uh, begin the process? Okay, they can go uh, visit our website at www.namasketgroup.org, and uh, there's a link that you can click on um, to register for the walk run. All right, and uh, it's all there. Yes. I visited the website mm -hmm. uh, before we did this show. And uh, yeah, the information's all there, and you can you can pick up a pledge sheet as well there. Yes. All right. Yes. So yeah. registration fee is twenty five dollars. The first one hundred twenty five uh, folks to register will receive a free T shirt. Okay. And uh, so the process has begun. The fundraising process has begun mm -hmm. for the Damascus Group in Mattapoisett, the five k walk and run, May fifth at the Fort Phoenix State Reservation here in Fairhaven. Very important to help out this community organization. They do some great work and they uh, do change the lives of many, many people. And uh, I want to, well, first congratulate you. Thank you both for the work you Thank do. Thank you for it's, having us. Uh, it's uh, very special. And uh, good luck with the fundraiser. Thank you. That's very Thank important. you, Jim. Ross, thank you. Heidi, thank you. Thank you. And thanks for tuning in to Town Square Sunday, WBSM's weekly public affairs program. I'm Jim Phillips. Our thanks to WBSM production director Jason Kent and digital editor Casey Sylvia for their help with the program. Join us next Sunday at 6 a.m. Until then, have a wonderful week and a great Sunday. <laughs>